I'm really excited to be here speaking to all of you. And we hope to bring inspiration to you as we speak with our journey to a mood cloud platform, the challenges we faced and how we solved them, and how CockroachDB is a critical component of our platform. I'll be sharing staging with Mario, and I'll let him introduce himself before we carry on. Hi, everyone. I'm Mario, and I work with Roger at Farm3 Platform Data Team. Uh, we take care of uh, Farm3's CockroachDB clusters and other storage systems. And we also help the applications teams deliver consistently high performance and resilient services. All right. Now that we know who we are, let's, let me introduce you to Farm3, what we do, and how we operate our Mood Cloud platform. We build a real-time payment processing platform and our clients, which are the major, major financial institutions, they send payment process instructions from their customers to us, and we process the, those payments instructions. We do this securely and reliable, and we integrate with the major payment schemes that are there in the market. Our platform operates into the three major clouds, AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Our teams are all remote, and we have autonomy to operate on a stack DevOps future. Let's have an introduction then to our multi-cloud platform and what it consists of. So what's a payment processing platform? So in Form3, we offer a single API. And then from that single API, our customers can integrate with us. And we reduce the burden of multiple integrations from our customers to the payment schemes. It's basically our API sits in between the banks, finance institutions and the payment schemes. So to name a few, we have FPS, Bax, SEPA, and Swift. We do it securely. We maintain those integrations, and we make sure they are up to the regulations in a very regulated financially uh, market. To give you a flavor of technology that we are running on this multi-cloud platform, so you can, you can see on this diagram, to name a few, we are using Kong. All of our microservices, they run in Golang. And we are making use of NATS Jetstream and, of course, CockroachDB. As I said, we run into three major clouds, so AWS, GCP, and Azure. And our clusters are formed by Kubernetes clusters. And the tenants, which are, for example, CockroachDB and the other microservice, they are all running on Kubernetes. So as you can imagine, uh, CockroachDB forms a cluster spun, and that spans across all the three clouds. We have active to have active replication. That means we are able to survive a full cloud outage. We operate more than one cluster. Here is, of course, simplified. So we run clusters for critical components to our platform. And we also run clusters for components that are not critical for operations, such as reporting or auditing and such. And you can also see on the bottom of the diagram, connections and routing is configured through in, is configured through two of our physical DCs, and they are both sitting on Equinix. To make that, that connection work, we are using private connectivity from all the three clouds. OK, so now we have an introduction about our Mood Cloud platform. I would like to, to talk about the challenges we had and how we solved all of them. The first problem we had to think about is how to, to deal with pod-to-pod -pod connectivity when we are talking about pods talking to each other between, across three clouds. And to solve that problem, we are using Cilio CNI from, from the folks at Isovalent, routing between the three clouds by using private connectivity. And that goes through our physical DCs. And so that pods can talk to each other by using full qualified domain names. We are using core DNS with DNS forward. Our deployment, it's actually very simple. So our source code is hosted on GitHub. And because of that, we're using GitHub Actions in conjunction with Flux to make the reconciliation for our Kubernetes manifest by using OCI registries. On the security side, we have encryption at, at, trans, at, at rest and encryption in transit. And encryption, at, encryption in transit, we are using TLS certificates to make the encryption between client and server. To issue those certificates, we're using Cert Manager. And this is connected with HashiCorp Vault. And for the encryption has rest, we're using our own encryption keys. And this is being managed by the ESO, the, the external secrets operator. We also maintain our own CockroachDB operator, uh, which was based on vanilla. But we had to customize it to fit for our needs and purpose, including being able to run in a multi-cloud environment. 
when we had to think about backups, um, as we are running in a multi-cloud, we had to consider stuff like volumes, because all of this data will be on the networking and we could affect other workloads. We had to consider cross-cluster communication, because of course, as we have active to, act active to active replication, we couldn't just make a full cluster backup and because that would cause a strain on networking. So our solution is basically using locality restricted backups and we run backups from two clouds simultaneously. So we are doing backups from GCP and AWS at the same time. We'll talk a bit more about that later. To bring together observability, metrics, and alerting from the three clouds, the Kubernetes clusters, CockroachDB, NATS, all of those components, we are using Prometheus and Grafana, and also Logs.io to ship in the logs that we, we have from those applications. We also had to migrate several microservices from Postgres. At the time, we were using AWS RDS to CockroachDB, and this itself was another challenge that I'll let Mario talk more about that. As Roger said, uh, we migrated several uh, microservices from Postgres to Cockroach. Um, this was kind of a natural step uh, in our multi-cloud journey, uh, and we choose Cockroach basically for four main reason, reasons. Uh, we need resilience on a full cloud, so we need to support a full cloud outage uh, without uh, blips. Uh, we need a transactional database that works across data center, and we also need the zero runtime upgrades of the databases, and we also want to minimize the migration work for the teams. So Cockroach DB pretty much fulfills all these needs, and we choose them for the, this multi-cloud project. The migration from Postgres to Cockroach, like was mentioned on the previous talk, is not like a shift and lift uh, operation. Uh, we need to understand our data better, and we need to to, to tame the, the indices and data to the, the, the reality of Cockroach. Indices, cardinality, data cardinality, and the multi-version concurrent control were the major issues for us uh, that we had to learn and, uh, uh, and uh, bring to, to our side. And for, for indices, uh, pretty much like uh, the B3 index, uh, indexes on Postgres, the, the Cockroach is a tree kind of tree-like index uh, coverage. Um, this will allow you to plan the, the queries you want to make and therefore using less indices if you can. Uh, another approach is using partial indexes uh, where you can just uh, use slices of your data uh, on the index and will that, that will also reduce the, the amount of writes and the, the, the size of the indices. One thing that uh, we come to learn when we start to use Cockroach was the Cockroach doesn't really like uh, sequential data. So if you need to create an index, for instance, in a data field, on a timestamp field, we cannot use a normal index. You need to, sh to use the sharp based indexes for that. Also, on that data cardinality, uh, we use pretty much random UIDs everywhere, but that is not usually enough or might not be enough. Uh, because, for instance, if you have a, a table that uh, uh, the primary key is a client ID, for instance, if that's a UID, a random UID, if you have a, a, a client with a huge load comparing to the other ones, we will create hotspots on your uh, ranges, and that will degrade the... the um, uh, also, indices on Boolean columns or null columns will create hotspots, and we kind of learned this as, um, as we went along and uh, improve the, the, the applications. On the multi-version concurrent control, uh, pretty much like uh, Postgres, uh, every time you know that every time you apply the, a column on a row, you will have to rewrite the, the, the full row. Um, and and on, in, the, in case of Cockroach, this will be multiplied by the number of replicas we have for that range. So uh, the, amplific the amplica amplification of the writes is an issue that you need to tame. Another, another issue that you notice is that um, if you update the same row very, very so often, or very often, uh, that will also create uh, odd ranges and uh, the performance will, not, will be noticeable. I I'm going to explain now why we uh, shape the, the, the schemas and how we uh, address performance uh, issues with uh, specific workloads. We have this team that uh, they have two very important workloads for us. Uh, with uh, 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 they need to the SLS that they have is uh, 100 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds on the Centaur 99. The workloads operate in a very high concurrent environment uh, where the data is very transient, and the workloads workloads also operate uh, cross cloud. 
again, to, like Roger said, to achieve high availability and uh, be resilient to the full cloud outage. The first step uh, the application team uh, ran into was that uh, we were using too much memory and that will create the performance degradation. So they, they decided to basically denormalize the tables they had and use just a single table for everything. The nice uh, side effect of having less writes, which increases performance and uh, reduces latencies. Uh, having less ranges in memory will also improve the, the cache hit ratio, uh, will be, which also made a huge change on the, 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 the final service latency. The team went a step further, and um, because of the transit uh, nature of the data, they decided to drop one of the, or delete one of the, the columns uh, after a certain time, and that will reduce the time of the ranges as well, and will improve the memory performance. We end up uh, performing, uh, provisioning the Cockroach TV nodes with more memory, so the, uh, the, the team's workload will uh, uh, work well and with no problems. All these changes allow the, the team to meet their SLAs, uh, but as soon as we, as we start to, to test with the uh, higher loads, we notice that uh, the performance start to degrade again, and so we had to do a few other uh, a few other changes. One of the things we did, and to reduce the, the effect on updates on uh, certain columns, was to use column families. Uh, this will really reduce the, 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 the changes on the multi-version concurrent control, uh, uh, version control, and will definitely, and will, it, it will, it did reduce considerably the, the, the contention and the, and the latency. Because the tables were growing quite uh, fast, and uh, because the, um, uh, as, the tem as the tables grew, uh, we had more stuff in memory, uh, we, uh, we decided to use TTL jobs and row level TTLs to trim down the tables to just to the, the amount of uh, rows we needed or the, the amount of time we needed the, the rows there. And using the TTL jobs is, it really improved our performance and um, because the, we, you can configure the TTL jobs to, to be rate limited so you can make, make them go slow and therefore not affect the, the main workload. They also run on lower priority than the normal uh, queries, so they, they don't have much effect on the normal service. And all of these combination of schema normal, the normalization and the uh, column families and um, using TTL jobs for trimming data really uh, create a, a service that, which is really high performant and we have a very easy cluster to maintain. So back to you, Roger. Thank you. So talking a bit more about how we manage black backups in multi-cloud. So as I said, we're using locality restricted backups. This came, came out with 23.1. So we're using almost the latest version available. We do backups in two different clouds, GCP and AWS. So this gives us more resiliency. So in case of a cloud outage, we still, we still can keep doing backups. And if we really need, I hope we don't, we could still restore backups from the other cloud that's still up and running. We are also using IAM roles and service accounts to do authentication because we don't want to deal with secrets and secret rotations and so on. We have tried uh, the backup solution with Kubernetes cron jobs, but in the end, we have decided to fall back to the built-in schedules. In the end, it's a much simpler solution, less complex, less moving parts, much easier to manage, and it works really well. So in case of a backup job fails, CockroachDB will automatically retry it until it succeeds. So we basically don't have to worry about it. As we have a restricted RPO of five minutes, we basically have to do incrementals every five minutes, and this backups is staggered across clouds. And with a small cost, it's ba basically doubling, doubling the storage costs. And we, cover. we cover a scenario where even if a cloud outage happens, we are still having backups being executed. We also have observability in place. We don't expect backups to fail, as it has the retry mechanism in place. But if it does, we'll get paged, and an engineer would have to troubleshoot and do something about it. So just to illustrate how simple it looks, our backup solution is basically we have CockroachD forming a cluster across the clouds, AWS, GCP, and Azure, and AWS and GCP doing backups to the cloud-managed object storage, S3, and Google Cloud Storage. It's literally very simple, less moving parts, less complex, much easier to maintain, easier to troubleshoot, 
and the small cost of storage, we have had the redundancy of backups. So if you look a bit deep, deeper than into our observability and monitor solution, uh, we have a combination of vanilla dashboards, the ones that are shipped with the vendor, and we have also built our own. So as we operate on a platform team, we have Grafana dashboards that is specific for our operational purpose, but we also have Grafana dashboards for the application teams, and those are dealing with end-to-end -end metrics. Again, Prometheus, Grafana, Logs.io, this is the base and the foundation of our observability and alerting. And we also we use pager duty so that engineers are paged whenever alert fires. We are making use of Visus, uh, which is basically a Postgres exporter, because we had to write our custom metrics based on SQL statements. We are literally querying internal tables from CockroachDB because we're exposing some metrics that otherwise are not being exposed by CockroachDB itself. So to give an example, we are exporting the rate of contentional events that are raised by a specific DB or a specific table. In that way, we can easily identify if there's a suboptimal query or if there's an application misbehaving. And it's much easier for an engineer to troubleshoot when he looks at, at those metrics. He wouldn't need to log into a console UI or something like that, for example. The other metrics we are exposing it's a custom metric about database size and table size. So this helps us on forecast how much our clusters are, are growing. Then we can start thinking about disk sizes in maybe two, three, five, ten years. And this also helps on driving budget discussion discussions with the engineering teams. Also on the metrics, we, we are using the latency buckets to drive our SLOs and SLIs and how do we deal them with the application teams. So to give an example of those custom metrics that we are exporting, uh, we also have Grafana dashboards on top of it. So you can see on the top panel at around 5.30, we had a spike on contentional events. So this itself is a good indication that at that time, a query run in that database that touches that table, and then one of the engineering teams will likely have to troubleshoot because something went wrong or there's a suboptimal query running at that time. And on the bottom, you can see the database size, how it grows with time. It's just an example of a single DB. Uh, and this is, this is helpful for us to forecast how the DB or the specific table is growing in case the engineers, they cannot forecast their volume. That's us. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to our presentation. Thank you.